it's only a number. The thing is, there's something called menopause that we're definitely affected by. I think there is more attention to it than ever before. We go through so much during that time of menopause and that drop of hormone levels in our body can wreak havoc. A lot of the symptoms that some of us have might sneak up on us gradually and we may not have an idea that it's because of menopause. And I have people in my life that have honestly thought that it was another ailment. They didn't realize menopause could cause things like changing your size in pants, or they definitely know it causes hot flashes. I feel like that's the one most people think of when they think about menopause. Welcome to Lauren's self-love studio. Empowering you, a young at heart friend, to embrace self-love, shift your mindset, and create the life you feel aligned with. Because I'm your friend, I want you to know it's definitely more than that. It can actually cause mood swings, hair loss, itchy skin, um, what else? Bloated, like I mentioned. Um, you can change the way you taste foods. I mean, so many things. Aches and pains, like joint pain. So I know joint pain can be a sign of so many illnesses, but sometimes it's caused from that drop in estrogen. Estrogen estrogen plays a major role with anti-inflammation and I didn't know that I didn't realize that menopause could cause dry and itchy skin my hands were becoming uncontrollably itchy along with other symptoms that are right in line with those of menopause or postmenopause. Now, I did start getting these symptoms quite early, and they've been going on for years. The worst being night sweats. And what that does is that interrupts your sleep. So you, you then have sleep deprivation, and that causes a whole bag of tricks. It can really <laughs> um, put a dent in things if we're not on top of it but we can be we can be on top of it and we don't have to suffer through these symptoms a long time ago when they would give hormone replacement therapy from what i understand there was so much controversy with it causing possibly cancer and people were afraid to go on it understandably even though there might be some validity in that there's more to it we do need to take into consideration the individual so knowing that at least that tells that tells me that i have a chance to go and at least get tested to see if i would be a candidate for hormone replacement therapy and so that's what I did because it got to a point where I was sleeping three or less hours a night and that can catch up on you. You feel slightly, you can't talk and you feel slightly less patient, just slightly <laughs> or more sometimes. What I did was I started hormone replacement therapy. I got tested for menopause and it showed where my estrogen levels were and they were super low, like below 0.5. I spoke to my doctor and we decided it would be a good option to try. So I started about three weeks ago and so far, I think there is a slight improvement with how many nights I wake up 
drenched. The night sweats have not stopped, but they definitely are less frequent. So to me, that's, that's a plus. Now, unfortunately, I had to stop the hormone replacement therapy because I'm having surgery on my neck for stenosis. So it's a general rule for surgery to go off of any medicine that has a possibility of causing blood clots, just like the pill everybody was told before they went on the birth control pill that there's a possibility of blood clots. So I actually think it's in quite a few medicines that there's that risk. And I don't think that it's a big risk. Nonetheless, it's a risk. And that's also a risk with surgery is blood clots. So because they both carry that slight risk, it's just um, smart protocol of the hospital and the doctor that I go off of the hormone replacement therapy until two weeks post-surgery, and then I can pick it up again. And maybe you're trying some things that are less invasive, if you wanna say, or non-pharmaceutical solutions. Um, drinking more water, eating high protein foods, eating low sugar, higher foods and fiber are better. There's lots of different things we can do. Ex weight bearing exercise. So not just exercise, weight bearing exercise. There's so many things that we can try if we're not ready to try or to see if we're a candidate to try HRT. Those are all things that I did, by the way, I did do. I changed my diet before I even knew that these symptoms probably are from menopause. And it did not make a huge difference. I felt better, but it didn't change the night sweats. And as I said, that sleep deprivation is not something you want to continue. I hope that the information today helped you in some way to know something more about menopause and to maybe satisfy anything that you were wondering about that you might have been experiencing. But again, I'm not a medical expert by any means. I'm speaking just from my experience and other women that I've talked to or other doctors that I've learned from from YouTube. Definitely ask your doctor before making any changes because that's the expert. The other expert and the most important expert is you. We know truly what our body needs. We need help sometimes confirming that. But I feel like there's a part of us, our intuition, that always knows. It's just a matter of being quiet enough to hear it. It's not easy way. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take good care and namaste.